You're listening to Brutal Rewind, brought to you by your friends at Murder Metal Mayhem. We take a topic we've already covered, hogtie it, put a ball gag in its mouth, and throw it headfirst into a wood chipper. What comes out is our new twist on the subject. Brutal Rewind is exclusively brought to you by Shaker's Cigar Bar in Milwaukee, the most haunted bar in the United States. Book a ghost tour at Shakers Today at hangmantours.com. And now, here's your Brutal Rewind. All right, what's up, guys? What's happening, motherfuckers? Doing a little two for this week, yeah. uh, recording ahead of time, because Joey's going to be on vacation and doing Brutal Rewind number six. You know, yeah. Chris had informed me it's actually three times this week, because yeah, we, we're here we Sunday. Sunday. Oh, that's Monday, true. Oh, wow. Skip Wednesday, down Damn, here Thursday. pulling in the double duty, <laughs> triple duties. Uh, so, uh, Brutal Rewind, though, is a different format than our usual episodes. If you have never heard one of these before you'll see it's a it's a lot different a lot shorter format and just something that we do to revisit a topic we've already done so uh you guys doing there. good a little chilly here in the midwest today we got cold again like a song bitch had to turn the heater on but uh, hey it's uh it's spring is very close and uh, tonight, though, we got Brutal Rewind 6. Number 6. Uh, six when we six. do these... Yeah, I know. I thought about that, too, <laughs> to have some fun with that. Um, but, you know, when we do these, we don't do, you know, the uh, metal segment. We don't do mayhem. We just do it on a single topic that we've covered before when something has changed or there's some sort of update. And Gacy, I mean, we've covered him originally, Chris, in episode 87 right. when we had Low 12 here in the studio with us. And then before that, you and I did that, our first live episode, which was episode 33, God damn, uh, 2018. Yep. Um, and we were at the Dark History and Horror Convention and we did this live, but we talked about his artwork. Like his artwork and murderbilia. The yeah. murderbilia angle, yeah, so... So with the name like Gacy, though, I don't think we could talk about him too much. No. I mean, definitely uh, lots to talk about with him. And so here we are, third time, touching on some stuff that was broken in the uh, Hulu docuseries Deadly Legacy, which uh, very interesting about a detective who does some cold case work with the Gacy uh, unknown victims and uh, we'll get into that, but uh, thanks to Tex for suggesting that series, I, I was really interested, and uh, so that inspired doing a Brutal Rewind. Yeah. So, Chris, I mean, Gacy, one of the big names, obviously. Oh, yeah, everybody knows. What do you think it is about Gacy, though, that... Fucking clown shoes. Is it the clown? <laughs> the clown Probably. angle? Oh, and like 33 fucking young boys under his house, too, and like having... The, the parties with all the like uh, political people and everything right. with the bodies there. I mean, like it was just it blew up huge. That's why everybody fucking knows about who John Wayne Gacy is. And the clown is a huge fucking angle on it, I think. Okay, but yeah. That's yeah, I, I think the clown thing is a big part of it. The oh. number of victims, the fact that he buried him in his own house, which is fucked up. Right. Yeah. What do you think, Joey? What is it about Gacy? I mean, all of what you guys were saying, not to mention um, <clears throat> the fact that he did it in a suburban area, undetected for a number of years, you know, committing those kind of crimes. Um, right. The fact that, you know, he outwardly seemed normal and had a, a business and back then that just didn't fit the idea people got in their head whenever you talked about a killer like that right yeah i think all those things are correct um i would agree so it's it's definitely an intriguing one now huge thanks to our uh, sponsor exclusive sponsor for these uh, brutal rewind shaker cigar bar hell yeah that place is uh, the spot. amazing yeah it does hit the spot uh up there in milwaukee Bob Weiss and his great staff, uh, they're just great people. The food is awesome. The drinks are great. 
awesome atmosphere. I mean, next time you're up in that Milwaukee area, go check them out. We've talked about them Multiple many times. times. We've done a couple great. of shows from there. Yeah. Uh, very cool. They do the paranormal stuff. They also do the Jeffrey Dahmer walking tour, which we did, and we yep. had a good time. Cream City Cannibal Tour. Yeah. And then you got the Capone angle, which we covered when we did our Capone episode. Uh, so just a great place. So... You can go to Shaker's Cigar Bar or book your tour at hangmantours.com and you definitely won't be sorry. Okay. So we've had listeners go up there and just have a really good time. So yeah. it's, it's awesome. Uh, so again, the Brutal Rewinds are short. So let's get to it. John Wayne Gacy, he's in his clown makeup. He is patiently waiting to be discussed looks, once again. So Looks like he's... Uh eyeball at H.H. H. Holmes. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get the mask here at the studio, the pogo mask, and it is definitely creepy, but he's staring over there at H.H. At H. Holmes. So, All right, now I'm sure everyone who's listening knows who John Wayne Gacy is, but just a quick summary for anybody who might be new to true crime and just happened to stumble on this one. Um, we've seen some of these brutal rewinds blow up and listen, so it's hard to say what makes somebody want to listen to any one specific episode. But uh, John Wayne Gacy murdered men and boys between 1972 and 1978 at his home at 8213 West Summerdale in Norridge, Illinois, which is a Chicago suburb. Um, he did murder, you know, all the victims at his home, he said. Uh, 29 of them were buried in the crawl space beneath the house. One was in the under the concrete in the garage and the rest were in the Displains River. Uh, one of the things about Gacy uh, that most know is that he loved wearing that clown makeup and entertaining kids and doing events like that. He also had his own contracting business, PDM. Hell yeah. And we've talked about that many times. And uh, a lot of his victims were employees or boys that he met while he was working. So... Um, he was convicted of 33 murders, and he did his time at Menard Prison, which is in southern Illinois, and he was executed May of 1994 at Stateville. On Joey's birthday. On Joey's birthday, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny as we were watching the, the docuseries yesterday, and Chris was like, man, when did Gacy die? I was like, May 10th, 94, and he was like, Wait, your birthday is May 10th. I was like, yeah. I was like, For real. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, Stateville Prison, though, up there by Joliet in Crest Hill, Illinois. And I always love this. His last words were, kiss my ass. Kiss my ass. Yeah. And uh, last meal was KFC. Yeah. So he I mean, imagine KFC, that. Kind the of fucking, funny. The irony of that. It's almost like you would think that you would never want to eat that shit right? again. Right, when right. you own business. And he was work. like, oh, my last your meal. Your last fucking meal. bucket. Yeah, right? bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so that's taste. the short and sweet version of what Gacy did. Uh, either of you guys have anything that you want to add to that? Again, I know most people know who he is, but I tried to kind of give it a quick uh, thumbnail sketch. Yeah. I did realize yesterday that the bridge that he fucking threw the bodies off of was a bridge across fucking all the goddamn time. Yeah, on oh, 55. Yeah, me like too. On 55 going up to Chicago and yeah. shit. Like, it's funny. That. Every time I drive over, I'd be like, oh, this is where Gacy... But I was just... I didn't know that was the spot. You know, I yeah. figured there were other bridges. Yeah, that But that's was the exact one. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is creepy to think, hey, he was over in the shoulder there Fuck, throwing, yeah. throwing bodies over the fucking side when his crawl space got too full, so... Uh, the only thing that I think that I would add to this, because just like you said... If there's one person out there for that, for some reason, don't know who the fuck we're talking about. Right. But uh, one thing I thought was important just to reiterate was that um, he actually got convicted of sodomy in Waterloo, Iowa in 1968. Right. And he was given 10 years. He only did 18 months. And his first victim was killed in 1972. And his last one, Rob Peace, was in 1978. Right. So that's 10 years from when he was sentenced. So all of this shit happened in the time that he, he should have been, have been in prison. locked, locked up. up. Right. right. So I just wanted to reiterate that real yeah, quick. Yeah. And I know we talked about that when we did the episode. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, that is really fucked up to think if they would have just kept him in. Yeah. Now, we've covered that kind of thing in several of these cases, you know. And, of course... Nobody on the parole board was expecting him to be an infamous serial killer, but 
you know, they let these motherfuckers out sometimes way too fucking early, you know. Yeah. And uh, in this case, yeah, we wouldn't be talking about 33 dead kids, you know, boys right. and, and young men. It was a six, between the ages of like 15 to 21 or something. Yeah, so yeah. really young. They were all super young. Yeah. yeah. Now, there were eight victims that were never identified, so the show I've mentioned, Deadly Legacy. 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 Dude, yeah. <laughs> dude Lily, my youngest daughter, she came out right when that came up on the screen. Yeah. And she's, she's like, Legacy, what's that? <laughs> Legacy. I get it. Like, even my daughter was like, yeah. I see what they did Once there. you <laughs> see it, then you really see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So uh, so anyway, yeah, the takes you to these cold cases in Cook County where the detective Jason Moran investigates. You know, you're talking about 40 to 50 year old cases here. Definitely not uh, a good episode, though, to listen to if you haven't watched the show and right, you don't want yeah. any spoilers. But uh, if that's the case, you might want to pause this and go watch yeah, right. it and come back. Um now, the first episode, there's three episodes. You guys watched it. The first one was about Bill Bundy. Yep. I don't know if he's related to Al Bundy. But <laughs> hey. Or Ted. That's what that. my daughter Ted, said, too. Yeah. Is he related to Ted? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Carol Bundy. <laughs> Carol Bundy. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he was a young man who was missing from the Chicago area. His sister contacted Jason Moran after reading about his online search for the victims that they couldn't identify. And... Uh, he contacts her to get more specifics, and uh, he winds up doing some DNA testing on the remains that they found in the crawl space with one of Bill's family members, yep. and then, bam, gets a match. Yeah, it was with so, his sister, right? Yeah, yeah, so they're able to, to conclusively say, yeah, Bill Bundy was one of the unknown uh, victims, so that was cool that they were able to solve that. Yeah. And, you know, nice, uh, I think the, the way they do it is cool. It's not, like, over dramatic. Um, you know, you get to see the families and right. what they're going through. And it's, it's fucked like up. It's, like, more for the victims and their family than it is about the actual murderer. Or whatever, right. Which yeah, is I agree. Which cool. Yeah, I think it's not done to, like, sensationalize what happened to right. them. It's more, let's figure this out, you know. And uh, Chris, I can't imagine though what it would be like with a loved one, you know, in that situation. And then at least you get you get some closure, like they did in this one. Yeah, they fuck. I mean, they let like all three of the stories, like the, even the other two we'll talk about. The families never really gave up hope. They always wanted some kind, like you said, some kind of closure. So I thought that was really cool that they didn't give up. And when they found out about Jason's thing. They went right to him. So yeah. the closure is a good thing. But I also thought it was messed up that back when they were originally doing it, the when they first had the Gacy looking for the who the victims were, the only way they could do it was uh, dental records. That's true. Yeah, I was and, surprised at yeah, that. Yeah, and uh, the, I think it was this this story, right? This first episode was when the dentist had uh, closed down and burnt all his dental records. So they had... Oh, wow. No fucking dental records. So forever, like, no idea until yeah. they open it back up for DNA, which was badass. Yeah, it's weird to think before DNA, in this case would be one of them, just before, it, you know, about 10 years really right. before that became an, an all-the-time thing. So now the second episode uh, was that uh, Edward Bowden, yep. um, young man from Chicago, also missing, like in the first one. Now, Jason Moran investigated the case and found out that Edward was not one of the victims, but he does some good detective work and is able to at least solve the case of what happened to him. And again, you know, the family gets some closure, but you got to feel for these grieving families. I mean, that's just tough, but at least they know now, you know, what happened to the guy. Um, but this was one that was not a Gacy victim, but right. I, I did like... The way the guy stuck with it and still figured right, out, even the though he's working on case. this, he's like still, he need to figure out who this person is, or yeah, because they found his car in like Missouri, wasn't right. it something like yeah. that? Yeah, and then they, that's what was so cool is like he went back and actually like figured out the guy that that stole the car, figure out where he found the car, right? And that's where it was like at first you could kind of see connections where it could have been you know possible Gacy right uh, involvement. 
And then once you start seeing, you know, the real uh, retraction of the the steps and events that took place for that car to get from where it started to Missouri, right? It's like, oh, okay. Well, then it really didn't have anything to do with him, so it, you know, it nixes everything, right? Any suspicions you might have, mm-hmm. which gave more factual evidence to what happens to the family now knows, right? Which is better. So. Yeah, I think it's it's really cool. What I thought was most of about that case was like the. The guy had actually admitted to doing it, and yeah. they went out and searched for the body yeah. and shit, Just and they couldn't, couldn't find, find the body, so they let him go. Right. And then what was it? However many years later, these kids happened to stumble across these bones in a shoe, and yeah. the kid was at like a wedding or something, and he's wearing an old 70s style suit or whatever, and they found these bones, and that's the bones that they did the DNA test on to figure out who he was and shit. So right. That, I just thought it was weird that, he confessed, but they couldn't find the body. Right. That is weird. That is weird. But yeah, it was cool that they stumbled on it. You know, usually they do. I mean, with these, eventually right. somebody's going to find something. You yeah. know? Now, the last of the three uh, was that missing teen from Minneapolis, which I thought was interesting. Jimmy Hawkinson. A uh, very interesting story because he was 16. He leaves home to go to Chicago doesn't tell anybody what the hell he's doing, and he's 16. Yeah, he just so, said he's going to Chicago. See yeah. ya. Um, Jason Moran does his work with this one. He finds out that Jimmy was a Gacy victim. Now, I found this very interesting. They found an eyewitness that saw Gacy in this pharmacy. He just loved pharmacies. He must. He must. Because, yeah, <laughs> that's where he's Robert Peace. Yeah, yeah. Robert Peace, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, this this pharmacy in Minneapolis, which was located next to a Dairy Queen, where uh, this Jimmy Hawkinson and his brother and sister used to go to all the time, she recognized that it was Gacy. He was there doing some work for PDM. I would get a cherry dipped and they'd get chocolate. They'd get chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. That. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so who knows? Maybe he recruited Jimmy to work with him because yeah. he was trying to recruit a kid there at the pharmacy is what that witness said, but wound up not working out. But uh, who knows? Maybe Jimmy happened to you know wrong place, wrong right. time. Gacy invited him to come to Chicago, gave him his number or whatever. and Tell him that's how much that. money he could be making and shit. Yeah, just like a, blowing smoke because yeah. Gacy was good at bullshit, and we Hell know yeah. that. So came across very likable and trusting. And so unfortunately, though, um, you know, he was a victim. So uh, they solved two of the three uh, yeah. as Gacy victims. The th- They solved all three, but the two out of the three – we're Gacy victims, so now you got down to six unidentified. So I'm not sure if they're planning on doing a sequel or another season to that. I hope right. they do, because yeah, that would be too. cool to find more of these. And he, um, I'm sure he's still working on it, no matter if they do another episode probably. or anything. But I'm sure he's still trying to find the victims. Yeah, you would think. And probably once they come to some resolution, then they'll maybe shoot more stuff for it. So... Um, it is crazy to think a case of this magnitude happened less than three hours from where we're sitting right, right. now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're really close to uh, where this happened. So, um, you know, it's it's messed up. I was not living here at the time. And, of course, Chris, you uh, you and Joey were born right around the time it all stopped, you know. Yeah, so, I was yeah. born in 78. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... it's uh, you know, before your time and before my time here, but, you know, it was in the news. And, of course, yep. the execution was in 94, and I was here for that. So I do remember seeing that all over the news when that so went down. One of the mo- things I'm most pissed about that I've lost over time was I had the newspaper from uh, down in Mattoon, uh, Journal Gazette, but it was like whenever he got executed, it was front page and pictures of the people outside the fucking prison with the no tears for the clown sign. Oh on. yeah. But there was just like probably a fucking 10 fucking full newspaper page right up all about Gacy and all that shit. And I fucking held on to that forever and I ended up losing it. But wow. and, it, and it was from my birthday too. Oh May yeah. 10th, so that's, you know, yeah, but that's know. messed up. So, uh, so yeah, so that's a little brutal rewind on John Wayne Gacy. Anything that you guys want to add since you watched those, uh, those episodes uh, as well? Basically, the, the, uh, all I want to say is the original guy that went into the crawl space, the, fir- the officer that was the first one in the crawl space finding the bodies. Right. He had a lot of Gacy stuff, like the pictures. Yeah. 
the pictures of the fucking barbecues that he did, like just albums full of Gacy's real stuff. And it's like, man, I mean, people would really oh my pay, God. pay money for that, which isn't my point, but some of it would be cool just to have just like, this was a part yeah. of that. Like, Oh yeah. Fucking crazy. But he had a lot of Gacy's personal stuff. Wow. I was like, holy shit, man. Yeah, that would be weird to just flip through a photo album of just looks like a regular guy, yeah. you know, at family functions and cookouts and to think all that shit was going on, like, like feet away from where they were cooking out. Yeah, like know? literally underneath where they were standing and yeah. shit. Like, right. Fuck, yeah, man. anybody that went in to use the bathroom, the bathroom you know, yeah, it was like fuck. right underneath that, yep. you know. Uh, the only thing I really had to add to this wasn't necessarily about what uh was on the docu series because i think we covered that pretty well but um just a, a factoid about gacy and then we were talking you know about his uh his art and the murder of billy and stuff well robert wrestler of course is, you know fbi My gunner. um he was you know supposed to have been gacy's favorite like he really oh, right. liked wrestler talking to him and everything oh, okay. like that now, uh, he gave uh, Robert Wrestler one of the paintings that he did, and it was one of him as Pogo, you know, the iconic right. drawings. Right. But on the back of it, he wrote this, and I always thought this was pretty interesting. Huh. But he wrote, Dear Bob Wrestler, you cannot hope to enjoy the harvest without first laboring in the fields. Best wishes and good luck, John Wayne Gacy, June 1988. And so Robert Wrestler was like, What's that supposed to mean, right. what John? Does that even mean? And Gacy, all he said was, uh, "Well, Mister Wrestler, you're the criminal profiler. You're the FBI. You figure it out." <laughs> and I always thought that was just some Damn. creepy shit. Yeah, you that's know? Some wow. Like, what? <laughs> that is pretty cryptic. Yeah. yeah, that's good stuff. All right. Well, I, you know, normally we don't uh, we don't act on breaking news, so to speak, on a show like this, but we got this last minute thing that just came in. <laughs> it's about we got this special killer cage match coming up, Chris. Right. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> serious shit, man. We yeah, had the dude, weepy dude, voice that's killer. The main event. This promo shit going on that we got sent. What the yeah, fuck? I we, mean, we weepy got this, voice first punky? Yeah, we got weepy voice killer and punky brooks are going to be fighting in a cage match next week. Uh, episode 134, our three-year anniversary show. Hell yeah. And apparently Punky sent this in. I don't know what this is, but he asked me to play it. So I'm, I'm going to honor his, so you know, his wishes. So yeah. let's check it yeah. out. Oh, shit. Up in the studio one time. Punky Brooks and this motherfucker 419, ho. Y'all be talking shit, but... You don't want none of this shit right here, man. We getting fucking crazy. WBK, get the fuck out of here. When Murder Mail Mayhem Killer Cage Match comes up, I'll be fucking representing. But first, I got something to say, homie. WBK, use a bitch ass lame. 419 ho, where we rep that gang. Cry all you want, but I ain't gon' change Cause in the killer cage match, I'll be eating your brains You'll be weeping for days, crying more than the rain Finley Crips, ho yeah, rip that gang You ain't got shit else to say, while I'm hitting my J Your skin's paper thin, I guess we'll call you CCK Ha <laughs> ha represent motherfucker, we coming at you 419, ho, watch out Oh, shit's getting wow. real, bro. Shit is getting Man, real. Man, Punky's not taking this shit sitting down, apparently. <laughs> Damn. Man. Wow. Joey, what the fuck, man? Man, I don't know. He's it's getting serious. I mean, he probably spent, you know, a quarter million dollars well, on that yeah, studio. That time. sounds like legit, <laughs> right? you know, Punky. This is, man, man fuck, so this Jake weeping. Paul ain't got shit on Jake this Paul fight. Shit. Weepy voice better be fucking getting himself together yeah, come on, man. man you better fucking pump it up i guess so wow this is gonna be interesting so all right well that's next week uh, episode 134 <laughs> the killer cage match between God, weepy damn. voice killer and punky brooks what a strange fucking thing we're but... so stupid <laughs> it's so funny though. 
I fucking love it. Man. Oh, it's so ridiculous. But that's what makes this fun. Yeah. We legitimately oh, yeah. are having a good time. No. So thanks oh, no, again. I know a lot of the listeners out there were like, oh, shit, that's yeah, going to oh, be yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, shit, man. So well, there's a little one for you. Uh, oh, God, thanks God. again to Bob and Shaker Cigar Bar for sponsoring the Brutal Rewind. Please go check out ShakerCigarBar.com. Or book your tour at hangmantours.com today. Thank you, Bob. Yes, yeah. and go to the episode description with links to all this stuff. Don't forget to check us out at murdermetalmayhem.com to listen to all the past episodes. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you could support the show by joining that 666 Club. Go to patreon.com slash murdermetalmayhem and join now. Only three bucks a month. And I'll have that linked in the episode description as well. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks for checking out this Brutal Rewind. We'll see your asses next time. Yeah, keep it metal. Stay brutal. Mother. Mother. Man.